I hope that those of you using Android have at least looked into using F-Droid on your phones. Really, I hope that you already have it installed and that you're using it as the primary source for your apps on Android. But if you don't know what this is, if you've never heard of F-Droid, it's basically like an alternative app store for Android phones. There's a ton of great apps in there that you won't even be able to find on Google Play and they're generally much more privacy respecting and the apps typically don't track you or show you ads like a lot of the Google Play apps do. But what you might not have known is that there are additional repositories that you can add to F-Droid to get access to even more apps. Now, a lot of these repos, they just contain one or two apps in them. Typically what you see is somebody who creates an app that they want to release on F-Droid. Instead of trying to get it into the official F-Droid repository, they'll just go and create some other repository and then tell people, yeah, add this link to F-Droid and then you can install it that way. But there are some repos that contain a whole bunch of different apps, like Izzy on Droid, for example. This repo alone, it has 844 apps in it as of today, almost a thousand. And you can add this to your F-Droid by either scanning this QR code, probably the best way to do it if you're watching this on a computer and you've got a phone with you, or you can add it by just going into F-Droid and then adding in this link here. You can type it or copy and paste it and then refresh F-Droid and it'll sync all of these apps into it. So lots of great apps in here like this Mastodon client, although maybe it's not that great because it looks like it hasn't been updated in almost five years. Uh, but what else do we got? We've got Activity Watch. So this is one of those kinds of apps that is becoming more and more popular these days. I think because people are starting to get more aware of smartphone addiction and social media addiction in general. And so they want to be more aware of their screen time. They wanna be more aware of how much time they're spending on different apps. So they might install something like this. But the reason why this is gonna be better than most of the apps you'll see in Google Play is because with this app, it's tracking your activity just for you to see. It's not tracking this activity and then sending it off to some other person that might try to sell it for ad data or anything like that. Uh, it's putting your own data in your own hands. Uh, what else do we have? We've got audio source. So this lets, looks like it lets you use an Android device as a USB microphone. So that's obviously gonna be really useful and no additional spooky stuff going on with the app. Um, okay, so we've got a few apps here that um, kind of stand out to me and maybe you notice this red T and these orange letters here. So like this Bible app, for example, it appears to have some kind of tracking going on with it. So we can go into the details. And this is something that you'll see on F-Droid and other repositories that contain a lot of apps like this one. But even if it doesn't show on the repo, it's going to show when you import it to F-Droid. Uh, but anyway, this anti-feature. So this is highlighted in red. It really stands out to you. And these anti-features are going to be things that you probably don't want, like tracking, uh, ads could be in here. Ads aren't in this particular app, but like we can see here that this application tracks and reports your activity to somewhere. Pretty spooky. Probably not something that you want in any app, but especially a Bible app. Uh, Non-free dependencies, so that's another thing you might not want. It does it um, depend on non-free applications, usually Google services. If it does depend on Google services, then that's not even going to work on a de-Googled phone. So these are some things that you might generally want to avoid. And in F-Droid, it's really nice that it highlights these and makes them pop out at us. Next is Collabora Office, which is based on LibreOffice. And this brings the Office Suite to F-Droid. So you can go ahead and scan the QR code here if you've got your phone with you to add it into F-Droid. Um, so yeah, this has things like document editors and spreadsheet editors, so you can view them or edit them right on your Android phone, although more than likely you just wanna view them. I can't imagine trying to do something like edit an Excel file on a phone, especially without a stylus. That would probably be really difficult to do. Um, but the viewing part, you're able to do that, and it's actually pretty nice. I was messing with this app a little bit 
earlier today, seeing how it opened documents. And for the most part, it was accurate. Everything was there and it looked how it is supposed to. And the great thing about this app that you don't see with a lot of the other similar ones in Google Play is that it doesn't have any ads or tracking. So this is something I've actually dealt with personally on alternative like Microsoft Word type of apps in Google Play is they will put the ads right next to something that is important on the screen that you need to click. There's a lot of apps that do this. And it's so annoying because it basically ruins the functionality of the app every time you try to do something and then it opens up an ad by mistake. You don't have to deal with any of that in Collabora Office. Next, we have Briar. So this is another cool app that you're going to need to install its repo to get. And here's the QR code for you to do that. Briar, it lets you do secure peer-to-peer -peer messaging without requiring you to go through any centralized servers. So it's very similar to Yami, but it also gives you the ability to message people if the internet goes down. Uh, and the way it does this is it kind of lets your phone function sort of like a walkie talkie. So if another device that has this is within range, then you can message them over Wi-Fi or over Bluetooth. So pretty cool. You don't see utilizing those protocols in your average chat app. Bromite is yet another single app uh, repository that I recommend adding. It's one of the better browsers on Android, in my opinion. It's Chromium based, it's open source, it has a dark mode, and it has a built-in ad block. It's got pretty much everything that you would want uh, with the exception of being able to install other extensions. So that's something that you generally don't see on just about any app or any browser on Android, with the exception of Kiwi Browser. But personally, I still like to use Bromite more than Kiwi Browser. I mean, I, I switch between browsers, you guys know that, both on my phone and on Linux. I use multiple browsers for multiple different purposes. Uh, but anyway, next we have The Guardian Project, which is another repo that contains several different apps similar to IzzyDroid. And almost all of these apps in this case are to do with giving you increased online privacy. So the most popular one out of this repo, I would have to say is Orbot, Tor powered VPN. So basically lets you connect to it like a VPN, but it's actually sending your traffic through Tor. So it's even more anonymous than a VPN. And Guardian Project is also one of the few repositories that lets you add it over a Tor hidden service. So there's all these different alternatives for how you can add it to Ftroid, either direct HTTPS, this Amazon bucket, or the Tor hidden service, which you'll probably want to do if you're looking to be more anonymous with your phone. Next, we have the Kali Net Hunter App Store. So this is another repo that contains several apps. These ones are all about penetration testing and forensics. So again, very, very niche, probably not the kind of stuff that 99% of people who are using Android or even most of the people that are using Ftroid would be interested in. But if you're a pen tester, this might actually be a really useful tool to you. Definitely not a replacement for a proper Kali Linux machine though. Uh, you're definitely going to be limited in what you can do with these tools on an Android phone versus a more proper Linux machine. But I guess, you know, it is nice to have, right? It's better to have two hammers and only need one than for you to need two and only have one. And the last app that I'm going to leave you guys with is one that I actually use myself on the daily and that is Molly. And no, I'm not talking about the party drug, you silly goose. I'm talking about the hardened fork of Signal Messenger called Molly. So this adds some more secure defaults like using passphrase encryption to lock your database instead of Signal just using the pin by default. It automatically locks the app after a certain time of inactivity with Signal, pretty sure that's disabled by default. It shreds sensitive data from your RAM and it also has no SMS integration, and I believe that that is to prevent you from mixing up a secure signal contact and conversation with an unencrypted 
SMS contact and conversation because when you install Signal to your phone, it usually tries to become your default SMS app as well. So it'll let unencrypted chats go through there and it'll also have the encrypted ones assuming the other person is using Signal, but you might wanna separate those two things. So I would say that this is a really good option for someone who needs to run secure comms or if you have a group of people that need to do this and they're all willing to use the same app because the more secure defaults are gonna make it much harder to make a mistake, especially for a less tech savvy person. Same thing goes for session, which takes this level of private messaging even further because it's a fork of signal that doesn't even require a phone number for you to sign up to. So I guess that this is really the last repo that I'm gonna talk about for this video. Uh, and you can add it, oh, well I didn't even show you Molly's. So Molly, get it on F-Droid. Here you can get Molly Foss, and then here you can get Molly. And then for session, uh, we go to F-Droid, and here is the QR code for that. And I will also leave a link to this F-Droid known repositories in the description of this video because as you can see, there's a whole bunch of them, which I didn't even go over in this video. But like and comment to hack the algorithm, share this video with your friends, follow me on Odyssey, and have a great day.